region expressed desire to be retrained on SDG indicator 2.4.1. Uh, which is an important sign showing the country interest in Agenda 2030 in general and uh, measuring and monitoring sustainable agriculture for informed policy making, in particular using the SDG indicator 2.1, uh, 2.4.1 framework. Um, for this training, please note that we will keep the agenda a bit flexible, meaning the actual timings of the session may vary from the one uh, uh, shared with you in the draft agenda. In case if we don't find time today to answer your questions due to longevity of uh, some sessions um, um, that I expect, we request you to send us your questions in the chat uh, section uh, that we will try to answer at an appropriate time. So um, the core objective of, um, of uh, uh, today's training Sorry. Uh, is to Asanya, provide. Uh, Asanya, sorry. Maybe uh, let me present some rules for the meeting. So that uh, I'm, I'm going to come to that. I'm okay. going to come to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the idea is to provide uh, you a detailed training on SDG indicator 2.4.1 methodology, its compilation and interpretation. Th these are the sessions that we will cover in the detail today. We will show you the theoretical part as well as uh, some uh, some uh, made up uh, data uh, that will help you how to uh, go about uh, you know data analysis once the information is collected in the in the field on the data items and variables required to construct uh, SDG 241. Then we will introduce the data collection tools and instruments uh, developed for uh, collecting and uh, reporting data on the, on the indicator in more detail. We will cover that uh, part tomorrow uh, in, in, uh, in sufficient detail. Uh, we will also uh, help you understand uh, and evaluate the data gaps vis-a-vis -vis the requirement of uh, SDG 241 and discuss with you jointly the concrete plans to collect data on the indicator in the short, medium, and longer term. Uh, this is the section which we will partially cover hopefully tomorrow and uh, partially on, on the third day. And obviously the last um, uh, but not the least uh, objective of this training is to assemble key stakeholder, uh, both uh, data producers, that is the policy, uh, that, that is the national statistical offices, as well as the relevant ministry and institutions, but as well as the users, that is the, the, uh, um, the policy makers who, who are then going to use this uh, information to uh, make informed and uh, um, uh, informed policies. Uh, let me remind you that at FAO, we develop global public goods, uh, that is methodologies, uh, standards, and classification uh, systems in coordination, consultation, and obviously close partnership with key stakeholders at all levels. This training is uh, another important step in that direction to further uh, strengthen the process of engagement with the member states. Uh, we acknowledge and appreciate the member states' collaboration and support in uh, and uh, as I mentioned, further strengthening each other capacities and capabilities and to learn from each other experiences uh, to address the challenges of hunger and malnutrition and other major aspects related to agriculture at the national, regional and global level. Uh, for this training, uh, Stefania already introduced uh, herself. Uh, I am going to be joined by her. She is going to be playing a key role of facilitator uh, and moderator during the course of uh, uh, the next three days. In case if you have uh, any questions um, or issues related to technology or connection, uh, please don't hesitate to write to her in the, in the chat box. Now I will uh, request uh, Stefania to basically set the housekeeping rules that will, uh, that will govern uh, uh, this training. So Stefania, the floor is, is yours now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, maybe you want to stop sharing the screen so that I can share my presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Okay.
So you can see it, right? Yes. Okay. So thanks again, Sandhya, for this introductory speech. So now let me give you immediately some quick, uh, quickly some instructions uh, that were actually uh, already listed in the concept notes, but it's important to highlight uh, again a few. So first of all, preferably use a PC or a laptop and not a mobile phone or a tablet. Uh, this is because the content sometimes could be heavy to follow. So it's important to have big screen and it's also important that you are uh, comfortable and in a silent place. So with no background noise or echo and that you have a clear vision of your monitor. And please uh, turn off all the sound notification like uh, Skype, WhatsApp, emails, or whatever. If you have uh, uh, connectivity issues, so our voice breaks or the video freeze, close the other applications that might be open on your computer. And if it doesn't work, uh, you can also maybe check through your house or your office, wherever you are, if you can switch off some devices. You can access Zoom from all devices, so via web browser or via the application. But uh, we strongly suggest that you download the, the app. And uh, uh, please be sure that you have the latest version of the Zoom application. Um, so please check if you have some updates to do, because if not, some new features uh, will not work and uh, also for the enhancement of the security of the application. Uh, it's very easy, so you, to do this, you just uh, open the app and you click on your profile picture in the top right of the Zoom window, and then you, you check for the update. Uh, for better sound quality, please use the, do not use your uh, built-in computer microphone if possible, but use a USB headset with the integrated microphone uh, or a wired earphone and microphone. If several participants use the one unique microphone, and I already know we have some participants, please make sure that we're speaking close to the microphone. For future use, the sessions will be recorded and uploaded online on the SDG webpage. So in case you don't want to show, show your visage, please keep your camera off even when you are talking. Mm, so uh, let me say that uh, for the lead, uh, lead representative, you all know that we have asked uh, two lead representatives per country. Uh, just for information, we have a couple of countries that didn't give me the names, and these are Madagascar and Namibia. Uh, so if you want, please uh, uh, write me in the chat who are these two, uh, for two, these two countries, the lead representatives, so that I can um, promote them as uh, um, panelists. I also have some doubts for Mozambique, because I got the names, but not the email addresses. So. Please, for these three countries, if you want, please share me, uh, share the name so that I can uh, change uh, this stuff uh, to panelists. Uh, so this is only for the lead representative. Um, you are visualized as panelists. I'm sorry, I have some background noise. Uh, hope you can hear me well. Uh, so please follow the meeting in uh, mute mode and click the unmute button only when speaking or when you are giving the floor. This is because today we are all, uh, we are more than a hundred, as uh, Asandia said, and also it can happen to have some noises in the background as I am doing in this moment. I'm disturbing, uh, so I apologize. Um, and uh, um, we kindly of also have uh, asked you to have the camera switched off uh, un unless you are speaking, of course. So the two icons are uh, here on the bottom left of the Zoom interface. For the other participants, you don't have the possibility to unmute or to turn off uh, uh, the camera. But uh, the host can allow you to do it. So this will be granted with the little exceptions. We apologize, but it is needful for this kind of meetings with such a big number of participants. So if you have a question uh, that cannot be asked 
uh, in the question and answer section and you are not among the lead representatives, please ask the floor and we will evaluate case by case if allowing this exception. So as said, for both the lead representative and the participants, at any time during the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to submit your questions to today presenters. So to do this, just to type your question in, in the question and answer section here displayed, and do not use the chat box, please. You can directly write the question, or you can mention that we have one and wait for the SDG 241 team to give the floor. Then in this case, uh, you are asked to unmute yourself alone uh, to switch on the video if you want. And uh, um, uh, in case there is some internet connection, please, please be ready to turn uh, the camera off, of course. And please speak, speak loud and close to the microphone, stating first your country name, please, and then your question. And please speak concisely, slowly, and clearly, because we have the simultaneous translation, so the translator can uh, translate well and clearly also to the other participants. And when you have finished, you can mute yourself back and switch off the camera. You can also raise the hand virtually for requesting the floor. So uh, look for this symbol. It is the raise uh, hand function. And uh, um, please, if you don't have it in the, uh, this icon in the bottom bar, you can find it in the participants menu. Um, uh, before saying this, uh, let me go back. So uh, uh, as Fabian already mentioned, but just to uh, say again, so as time allows, the presenters will address as many questions as they can during the question and the answer session at the end of each presentation. So the floor will be passed to participants based on the order that appears uh, on my screen. Of my screen. Uh, to the extent possible, of course. So if many questions are asked, we will try to consolidate them by subject. And if still uh, there are so many questions, uh, be sure that we will be answered by email in case we don't have uh, time. So, but anyway, please be reassured that we will reply to all of them. Uh, for the lead representatives, please, uh, um, your, uh, change your name uh, and uh, insert first the country and then uh, your name. So to do this, you just click on the dots appearing in the right-hand corner of your image box and you need to select uh, rename. So you insert first uh, your country and then the last name, please. From time to time, uh, the SDG team will ask questions as sort of quizzes through the poll function in Zoom. So please don't hesitate to ask clarifications if something is not clear, since you will be asked to submit, uh, so you will be asked to, to, uh, to ask, uh, to reply, sorry, all the questions. So um, finally, whatever issues you have, please write me. My name is Stefania Bacci. You can use the private chat and you can change it easily in the general chat. You just need to change the recipient's name to all panelists. And I will be happy to ask to help you for any kind of doubts and questions and for whatever technical issues you have. So you all know we have the interpretation. It's available in French and can be selected at the bottom bar. Uh, you can see this icon here displayed. Uh, please consider that the interpretation op option is only available if you have downloaded the app. Therefore, if you don't see it, uh, uh, it's because you are connected to the web browser. So if you prefer to follow the training in French, switch on the French channel by clicking here, as shown in this screenshot. And uh, you will hear the, the, your translation at 80% of the volume with the original speaker at 20%. So you can still hear the, the tone and the intonation of the speaker. Please bear in mind that in a virtual meeting, audio quality may deteriorate unexpectedly and become insufficient for interpretation purpose. 
So our interpreters will indicate this verbally and resume the, interpret the interpretation as soon as the sound quality permits. Very important, if you are anglophone, please do not stay on off, but switch immediately to the English channel. Uh, yeah, you have also other options. So for example, if you prefer uh, to mute completely the, the original audio and listening only uh, the French. So we have uh, uh, David Heyman, Eden uh, Glitze, Senam Kumezzo, uh, and Timothy Wodo Koperei. Uh, they are the, our four interpreters today and uh, for the next days, of course. And you can see the word interpreter close to their names. So please pay attention uh, to the icons. If you see the flags indicated the languages, it means that your Zoom application is not updated. So in case just update the application, you need instead to see the initials of the language and on the flags. Uh, let me finish uh, with some instructions. Um, so um, the link of the recordings of the entire virtual training will be shared with you after the third day. We will be sending the certificates to all participants that will attend the three days. So we apologize, but we cannot send the certificate to those who attended only one or two days. And uh, uh, please consider we have already shared in advance all the previous presentation, but we will share them again after uh, the third day, today together with all the many supporting documents. So that's all for uh, concerning the, the rules. Uh, let me uh, share with you now quickly uh, the agenda. Uh, I know that Aspandiar already mentioned uh, uh, what we are going to see, but let's see here uh, uh, displayed in this uh, um, Excel. So today we will start actually with a very intense day. We are going to learn everything about the SDG 241. Specifically, we will see all the 11 sub indicators that compose the three dimensions. So the economic, the environmental, and the social dimension. Uh, today, let's say we should pay big attention to all what will be explained because it's the fundamental part of the whole training. And after each sub indicator presented and explained by Aspandiar, we will give you an exercise. You have actually received already the exercise in the invitation email. And we will reason together on how to calculate each sub-indicator. Uh, moreover, we will be launching, as I said before, some quizzes to assess if you have adequately acquired the knowledge transfer during the presentation. Of course, we will be taking a 10 minutes break every day so uh, let's go to the second day, to the second day. Let me go down. Okay, so tomorrow we will continue with the remaining sub indicators because for sure we will not have the time to finish everything today. Then we will present the data collection tools, so meaning the two questionnaires, and we will talk about the alternative data sources. And finally, a colleague of us from the Agris team will present also the Agris survey project and the 50 by 20 initiative. And we will close uh, with the presentation on the results of the uh, first comprehensive dispatch of the two for one indicator. I think uh, there is, I need to mute, okay. Uh, last day, uh, that, okay, so on the last way, day, we will open the day with a colleague from our team showing the file stats. And then we will be concentrated on the short, medium, and long-term expectation for the SDG 241. And finally, we will open the discussion to all countries. So especially on this third day, the lead representative will be requested to speak up and share their experience and concerns on the SDG 241 data collection and uh, um, calculation. So I stop sharing. And uh, so if uh, you don't have uh, any question at the moment, or maybe we have already one question. Uh, okay, so there is a problem. I will 
leave the floor now to ask Pandyar and then let me uh, try to solve the issues of our colleague. Thank you, everyone. As Pandyar, you have the floor. Thank you very much, you. Stefania, for uh, this very thorough introduction and uh, setting the rules uh, for the for the for the training. So let me immediately yeah. begin begin with the first session, yeah. which is um, yeah. uh, which will be about the SDG indicator 2.4.1 in in general. Uh, Stefania, can you? Uh, okay, so I'm, I, I hear some, uh, you know, uh, some noises in the background. So to give you some historical yeah. perspective, in early 2016, the FAO Strategic Program on Sustainable Agriculture and the Global Strategy mm -hmm. to Improve Agriculture and Rural Statistics joined forces to develop the pioneer methodology for the then tier three SDG indicator 2.4.1. This was to measure progress towards target 2.4. Um, now, as many of you may know, defining and measuring sustainable agriculture, which is a multi-dimensional concept is challenging. Um, the reason is obvious, it is complex, country specific, and thus despite several attempts in the past 50 years, since 1970, has never been done before. Given this multidimensionality of sustainability concept, FAO initiated a global discussion to deliberate the fundamental questions, that is what sustainability means in the context of agriculture, what are its fundamental building blocks, um, what are the economic, social, and environmental factors that affect and are in turn affected by sustainability in agriculture, um, both in an intertemporal and interspatial way. What thematic aspects to keep as part of the framework of sustainability and what to let go of? How to strike balance between different sustainability issues uh, faced by different regions and countries? how it will be measured and monitored consistently over time in a cost-effective way using a framework and data collection tools that are universal in nature. So we try to address all these questions which I just narrated as part of the methodological development of, uh, of SDG 241. Um, as we proceed with this training, you will find out that the methodology for the indicator Though the indicator is complex, no doubt, because it cut across the three dimensions of sustainability, is the methodology is designed in a way which is very logical, rational, and, and stepwise. So it involves simple arithmetic rules to arrive at sustainability assessment of the country. Um, once the data has been collected, cleaned, processed, and analyzed, um, uh, col data collected through, through different uh, um, agriculture surveys, censuses, et cetera. Now, the approved and endorsed methodology of SDG 241 is a result of a long participatory and consultative process that involved discussion with and contribution of thematic or subject matter experts statisticians, policymakers, and researchers from country institutions, that is the National Statistical Offices, Ministry of Agriculture, um, international organizations, civil society, private sector, and academia. Um, the reason behind us involving all these key stakeholders with such diverse backgrounds was to make this indicator owned by everyone. Um, especially countries. Uh, the current methodology of, uh, of SDG 241 embodies uh, the following principles. It is universal, policy relevant, uh, practical in terms of, uh, in terms of its, um, um, in terms of its cost effectiveness, though, though that, that part is a bit questionable as we uh, progress through the training. Uh, you will see uh, as to as to what uh, what does practicality entails. 
Now, the way the methodology of this multidimensional indicator is designed, and uh, as I mentioned, as uh, you will see um, during this training, is, uh, is simple, logical, and practical. Um, this was, of course, to ensure the sustainability of the indicator monitoring over time at the, at the country level. Now, I'm not going to go through the objectives because uh, I already touched upon these um, in, my, in my previous intervention. But in, in a nutshell, we will go over the methodology. We will talk about the data collection tools and instruments. Uh, we will try to understand as to what the data and capacity gaps are at the country level. Uh, we will discuss with you your plans in terms of implementing um, SDG indicator 241 uh, in the short, medium, and long term. Um, so, in a nutshell, you know the training will will revolve around around these objectives, and we'll try to achieve achieve it. So, goal two, zero hunger, uh, has five targets. Um, the target that we are interested in today is target 2.4, which is written in detail here. As you can see, like many other SDG targets, this target is a very complex one. We highlighted in red some of the key aspects that needs to be captured and uh, monitored uh, as we try to measure progress towards target 2.4. Sustainability, resilience, productivity, production, um, environmental considerations, that is uh, climate change, extreme weather, droughts, flooding, uh, land and soil quality, um, et cetera. Um, all, all these aspects in one single target. Clearly, uh, this mandated FAO um, to uh, develop an approach that captures these different dimensions or aspect of target 2.4. The indicator that was submitted to the interagency and expert group on sustainable development goals, which we call the IAEG SDG, um, and which was approved in March 2015, is proportion of agriculture area under productive and uh, sustainable uh, uh, agriculture. The indicator is now tier two, uh, which means that the international methodology uh, using which the indicator will be measured and monitored has now been approved by the IAEG SDG. Okay, so the methodology is finalized. Um, with, there were of course some refinements when we, once we tabled the methodology for IAEG SDG approval in October, 2018. Uh, they, they, can, they, they made conditional the tier upgrade of SDG 2.4.1 uh, on the fact that you know, FAO has to uh, carry out some refinements in the biodiversity sub-indicator um, that, of course, we will discuss uh, uh, during the course of this, uh, uh, this training. Um, anyhow, the methodology was... Uh, was uh, re-endorsed in November 2019. Now, uh, tier two means methodology is available, but very few data points exist currently at a, at a country level. Now, the formula that we propose to measure SDG 241 is, uh, is indeed very simple and straightforward. It's the area uh, under uh, productive and sustainable agriculture, divided by the agriculture land area. So let us focus on the, on the denominator of the formula first, because it's fairly, it's fairly straightforward. The agriculture land area is defined as arable land plus permanent crops and permanent meadows and pastures. Now, it's a, it's a well-known and established concept that is collected by statistical bodies um, in countries and compiled internationally via a questionnaire by FAO uh, and, and, and in turn is disseminated through FAO stat. Now, the issue obviously is with the numerator of the formula, which is area under 
productive and sustainable agriculture. How do we measure it? What is clear from the description of the target that we discussed on the previous slide, that we have to look at the sustainability uh, in agriculture across its three dimensions, that is economic, social, and environmental. Meaning the agriculture land area under productive and sustainable agriculture will be the agriculture area of those agriculture holdings or those uh, uh, agriculture farms that satisfy the sustainability criteria for the sub indicators that were selected across the three dimensions of sustainability as part of the methodology of SCG 241. Of course, we will, we will cover each sub indicator in detail in the next session. Now, here are the steps uh, that were basically used in the methodological development of SCG 241. So at FAO, um, of course, in collaboration with all the key stakeholders that I mentioned on the previous slide, we discussed and chose the scale of assessment of SCG 241. And the choice made for 241 was to, was to, um, was to adopt a bottoms-up approach, whereby we selected farms or agriculture holding uh, level sustainability that is then aggregated to the national level. The second uh, um, decision was to determine the scope of uh, activities of the agriculture holdings that will be that will be covered uh, as part of SCG 241. And the choice made was to cover or focus only on crops and livestock uh, activities or production systems. Then we we reviewed the dimensions that needs to be covered, and we decided to stick to the classical dimension of sustainability, that is uh, economic, uh, social, um, and environmental. Let me add here, in the beginning of the process, once we embarked on the development of the indicators methodology, we selected five dimensions. Uh, that included, in addition to the three already mentioned, that is economic, social, and environmental, two other dimensions, um, which were institutional or governance and resilience. However, uh, later during uh, you know the discussions, uh, the methodology evolved, um, and it was decided to integrate resilience uh, with the economic, environmental, and social dimensions and drop the governance dimension as we are exclusively focused on agriculture holding level assessments of uh, agriculture lands in terms of sustainability. Um, we then uh, zoomed into what we called uh, um, uh, the dimensions. Um, uh, we, we zoomed into what we call dimensions uh, uh, within, the, within the dimensions into what we call themes or aspects, I'm sorry. Um, and in turn selected the sub indicators that are needed to measure the progress within each theme or aspect. Uh, we, we then established uh, sustainability criteria, also known as uh, thresholds uh, or cutoff points for each sub indicator to classify the farms and agriculture area that it, it owns operates by assigning it uh, traffic lights. Um, that is uh, red, yellow, and green statuses. Um, then, of course, you know another another major decision for us was to uh, selection of the data collection instrument to collect and report data on SCG two four one. And the choice made was to uh, basically focus on agriculture surveys or uh, or farm surveys. Um, in addition to farm surveys, of course. Complementary information can be um, can be extracted from censuses uh, and, and other and other data collection uh, systems uh, in place at a country level. It could be administrative records, etc. Of course, we will discuss that in detail later on. We also um, discuss and decided on the periodicity of monitoring the indicator, and the choice uh, made for two for one was to was to uh, set it at three years. Um, and finally, 
modality of reporting the indicator. Um, this was for this we developed both um, a dashboard where all the 11 sub indicators or themes are presented in one single chart, um, where each sub indicator is illustrated separately by sustainability status and an aggregate SDG 241 um, is also um, uh, shown that can be calculated directly from the, from the dashboard. Uh, the principles uh, that were used to develop the indicator. First, uh, the policy relevance, actionability. We wanted to make sure that every sub indicator selected as part of SDG 241 framework had a meaning for the policymakers and thus provided information based on which informed decision can be taken to improve the situation on the ground at the national or subnational level meaning the sub indicators must be easily understood. That is the reason why these are selected in first place. And the results easily interpreted by the policy makers, um, just to exemplify, um, is agriculture sustainability decreasing and why? And what policies or a mix of policies needs to be implemented to improve the situation and address the issues on the ground. Um, universality and uh, comparability are fundamental. We are in SDG process, a universal process. Um, thus, we needed to make sure that the indicator is uh, applicable or valid everywhere. Um, that is, it must be relevant for all countries globally, both developing as well as developed. Um, measurability and cost effectiveness were very high uh, in our minds as we were trying to find a right balance between an ideal indicator from subject matter perspective and one that can be measured consistently over time with a reasonable cost by countries. So the affordability of the indicator in terms of data collection and reporting was our top, uh, was our top priority. Um, finally, minimum cross correlation between, between the sub indicators. Um, in this principle, uh, we try to select a limited set of themes and sub indicators. So efforts were made to re reduce uh, cross correlation among diff uh, amongst different aspects, themes or sub indicators that are used to measure progress within, within, within those aspects. Obviously, uh, as many of you know, high cross correlation amongst uh, sub indicators would imply that two or more sub indicators capture the same sustainability uh, phenomenon or issue. In this case, inclusion of one sub indicator instead of several uh, would have been sufficient to adequately measure uh, agriculture sustainability performances. Of course, um, while employing these methodological principle, all these decisions had implication for the choice of the sub indicators uh, for the different dimension aspects and themes the choice of sustainability criteria for each sub indicator and the level of sophistication uh, or complexity in, in, in data collection. With regards to the measurement scope, um, as we are interested in assigning agriculture areas sustainability statuses, um, the basic or the fundamental unit of observation and measurement that were selected uh, are, are farms or agriculture holdings with focus on those that primarily engage in crops and livestock uh, production um, uh, activities or a mix of crops and livestock uh, production. Uh, the, uh, the final uh, you know, um, uh, aim obviously was to see as to whether these agriculture holdings and the area that these agriculture holdings are managing or operating um, are economically feasible 
environmental uh, friendly and, uh, and, and the activities that they are performing are socially acceptable. Um, from this perspective, uh, we, we uh, included both intensive, extensive, as well as subsistence agriculture holding, as long as their primary activities or crops or livestock or a mix of crops or livestock. So these may include both food and not non-food uh, producers, um, as well as those agriculture holding, which are focused on growing um, fodder, um, cr crops for fodder or energy purposes. Now, uh, what's in addition to the primary activities, crops and livestock is within the scope. So the secondary activities are, uh, are considered uh, like say, for example, aquaculture and agroforestry, if and only if, and this is a big condition, if and only if these activities are performed as secondary activities apart from crops and livestock on the agriculture area of the farm, okay? So now what is out of scope of SDG 241? Um, holdings that are exclusively focused on aquaculture or agroforestry. So the, the holding for which the primary activity is aquaculture and agroforestry is not part of the scope uh, or is not covered by SDG 241. Uh, production from gardens, backyards, and hobby farms is excluded from the scope of SDG 241, as well as food harvested from the wild, nomadic pastoralism, and common lands, which are not exclusively uh, used by or managed by the agriculture holding for, for production activities. So all these are out of the scope of uh, SDG 241. Now, nomadic pastoralism, I, I assume uh, many of you uh, are familiar with, uh, with, this, uh, with this concept. It's a practice of growing or rearing livestock by moving with animals from places to places in search of a pasture. It's a way of life uh, for people in many countries um, who do not live continually in the same place, but move cyclically or uh, periodically or seasonally from one area to another. But anyways, uh, just to cut it short, nomadic pastoralism is also excluded from the scope of uh, SCG 241. Now, the periodicity or reporting frequency of the indicator as I, as I mentioned on the previous slide, is set at three years. Um, and this was obviously the result of, uh, of uh, various considerations. First, the SG indicator 2.4.1 measures progress towards more productive and sustainable agriculture. Um, now, for many sub-indicators that have been selected, and you will see that as part of the next presentation, it is unlikely that their values uh, will change from one year to another. So these are more um, um, uh, uh, sub-indicators um, which, which captures structural phenomena, right? Um, and secondly, the three years uh, data collection and reporting cycle will enable countries to have at least three data points on the indicator before 2030, assuming that they start reporting in the next year or so, okay? Um, so this will in turn help the countries as well as international institutions uh, like FAO being custodian of SU 241 to make historical trends to assess uh, uh, countries uh, as well as uh, uh, regional uh, performance over time and, and across countries. And lastly, of course, the prime consideration was to reduce data collection and reporting burden on, on member states or, or countries in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, reporting the indicator. Uh, now, as mentioned earlier, SDG indicator 2.4.1 its current metho methodology is designed where information is collected primarily through agriculture surveys or farm surveys. 
sustainability assessments are made and final results are expressed as a national value. However, the methodology is scale independent. Uh, what, what, do you, what do I mean by that? Um, uh, meaning it can be adopted for any geographical level. Though any introduction of additional stratification variables will certainly have implications for the, for the sample size um, and as well as the cost of uh, data collection. So in order to um, further enrich the analysis for informed national policy making, the indicator can be uh, disaggregated um, at, um, at a, a subnational level and according to different types of farms, that is uh, household, non-household, crops, livestock are mixed, irrigated and non-irrigated. And as I mentioned earlier, that the, the indicator can, can be further stratified or disaggregated at a subnational level by size of farm or, or gender of the, hold, uh, of the holder of the holding. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned earlier, the indicator is multidimensional. This slide presents a table or matrix that um, showcase everything that we need to know about this uh, uh, indicator 2.4.1. Towards the extreme left, um, you can see that the indicator cut across the three dimensions uh, um, of sustainability, economic, environmental, and social. Within each dimension, we have uh, selected uh, uh, themes or aspects. For instance, within the economic dimension, you can see three themes, uh, land productivity, profitability, and, uh, and resilience. Likewise, uh, in the environmental dimension, we have five themes, soil health, water use, fertilizer risk, pesticide risk, and biodiversity. And within the social dimension, we have three themes, decent employment, food security, and land tenure. Now, in order to measure progress towards these 11 themes, we have selected um, a sub-indicator. Um, uh, so for instance, to measure land productivity, we have selected a sub-indicator called farm output value per hectare. To measure profitability, we have selected net farm income and, uh, and so, so on. An important consideration to take note of is that we have to, being FAO, we have to develop a universal framework that covers the entire spectrum of uh, agriculture that, that uh, confronts sustainability issues that varies from one country to another or one region to another within the same country or one type of agriculture production, production system to another. Additionally, um, so, so just, to, just to highlight one, one, one more point, not all sub-indicators are applicable to all kinds of farming systems. Of course, we will discuss uh, this in detail as part of each sub-indicator, but for instance, the decent employment or wage rate in agriculture is only applicable to agriculture holdings that, that is hiring unskilled uh, laborers, as well as uh, food security that is measured through food insecurity experience scale uh, is applicable only to household farms. <clears throat> and, and secondly, as I was mentioning earlier, SC241 measure aspects, some aspects which are structural in nature and hence the recall period or the reference period for some sub-indicators um, goes beyond uh, one year. So for instance, profitability has a reference period for last three years, and I will explain it to you as part of that particular sub-indicator as to why. Uh, so is soil health and water use, those are measured for, 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 uh, for last three calendar years. Uh, while food insecurity experience scale, many of you may be aware of uh, this uh, indicator is already in the SDG indicator 2.1.2. Um, uh, for this, we have set the recall period or the reference period as last 12 months. Now, as I said earlier, the hardest choice 
was to limit the framework of SDG 241 to 11 themes or, and 11 sub indicators. Now, a series of expert discussions in meetings, you know, uh, consultations, both in person as well as online, literature review uh, and, and, and research has shown that sustainability is so complex that in general, a much longer list of issues needs to be considered and used to capture sustainability in agriculture. In this slide, you can see some issues that are considered important, but are not captured within the context or within the framework of SG241. Um, like say, for example, these are the aspects which are not, sorry, these are the aspects which are not covered um, at the farm level. And, and these are the aspects which are not covered as part of SG241 framework uh, beyond farm level. Uh, though these are not uh, covered within SG241, but we still being FAO recommend countries to consider these themes if these are relevant in your national or subnational context in order to assess the sustainability of your agriculture at a national or subnational level. One critical point that we will discuss in detail as part of each sub indicator in the, in the next presentation was, of course, the establishment of thresholds or sustainability criteria um, that are used to assign sustainability statuses to each farm and the agricultural land area that it holds owns or, or manage. Uh, briefly, thresholds or sustainability criteria or national, uh, are national policy-based or international targets or science-based absolute or relative values uh, below or above which for each sub-indicator, the farm and its agricultural land area uh, are assigned sustainability statuses. So for each sub-indicator, um, a criteria to assess sustainability levels have been developed. Um, in order to capture the concept of continuous progress towards uh, a higher level of sustainability, as I mentioned earlier, a traffic light approach was, uh, was developed in which three sustainability levels have been considered for each sub-indicator. Um, so green, we call it desirable. Yellow is a status which we call uh, acceptable, and red is something which is which is, which we call unsustainable. The traffic light approach acknowledges the trade-offs um, that exist between sustainability dimensions and themes, um, and of course, um, it uh, it forces us to find an acceptable balance. Across, across the different dimensions and different themes. Each sub-indicator is assessed at the level of agriculture holding and thereafter sustainability level is associated with the agricultural land area of that particular agriculture holding. And then, you know, all this information is then uh, is aggregated or added at the sub-national or national level to arrive at, um, at a national level uh, sustainability. Um, now, recollecting from the from the previous slide, the reporting of SG 241 can be done at uh, various levels using both dashboard as well as aggregate indicator. What we require country to report on is a dashboard and aggregate indicator at the national level. Um, what makes the dashboard approach more appealing is that it helps visualize the performances across the dimension, as well as across independent themes and sub indicator separately and distinctly. This makes the dashboard policy relevant and actionable as it gives the policymakers a tool to quickly check at a single glance where the major sustainability problems lies, where to put in emph emphasis, what policies needs to be um, device and put in place and resources directed to address the situation 
um, and to improve uh, and to move towards more sustainable agriculture. An added advantage of the dashboard is that it allows the possibility of combining data from, from different sources apart from, apart from uh, the, the core or the primary source, which is agriculture survey. Now, the computation and construction of each sub-indicator is carried out uh, separately. Uh, sustainability assessments are made for each sub-indicator at the agriculture holding level. Uh, thereafter, all farm level result associated with agriculture areas are aggregated and uh, a national level picture is, uh, is, is derived. Now, just to, just to uh, give you an, uh, an example, this is, this is the made up data for, uh, for uh, an XYZ country uh, for, 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 uh, for, uh, for, a, for a year. On the vertical axis, we measure the percentage of agriculture land area, on the horizontal axis, we measure the different themes or the, or the sub-indicators. In fact, we have 11 themes and 11 sub-indicators. As you can see here, you can at a single glance see where the major problem is. So um, obviously from, from, from this dashboard, you see that the major problem is with profitability, uh, resilience and, uh, and, and soil health uh, sub-indicators. Now, the final aggregate 2.4.1 is derived from the dashboard at the country level. The final number of 241 is the result of sub-indicator that has recorded the highest level of unsustainability. This can be easily done either using the formula below, right? Uh, or by looking at the dashboard and checking as to which sub-indicator amongst the 11 has achieved the highest level of uh, sustainability or unsustainability or red at the country level. The performances of uh, countries over time can be measured by the changes in proportion of agriculture area that is unsustainable um, or conversely by tracking the value of uh, uh, sustainability, that is the area which is acceptable as well as uh, desirable. So let me, let me go back here. So once the dashboard is reflected at a national level for the 11 sub-indicator by sustainability statuses, red, yellow, and, and green, the aggregate value for SG241 can be easily derived. All you have to do is to look at the dashboard and draw a horizontal line, uh, which touches the maximum red on, on any given sub-indicator. So in this, for, for this uh, made up case, uh, fictitious uh, data, based on fictitious data, as you can see, the final value of SDG 241 would be 40%, which is the maximum uh, that the country has reported for a, uh, given sub-indicator in terms of unsustainability. So uh, we said in the beginning that policy relevance is very important consideration. In this respect, the dashboard is really interesting as it provides a structured and transparent framework to measure and report on sustainable, sustainable agriculture. It allows focus on the main issues related to sustainability and encourages discussion by linking it to policy actions. And lastly, it drives the policy uh, towards agriculture sustainability issues with focus on interventions at, at, uh, at uh, various levels. Uh, needless, to, needless to say that um, uh, it is very easy to interpret in terms of the extent to which uh, the country agriculture is far from being productive and sustainable. And as I mentioned, it's very easy to identify and prioritize the area that require intervention. So thank you. I will stop here. Move forward with the next presentation. We move to the, the framework, which is indeed the core content of this training. So we will see in detail all the three dimensions and all the sub-indicators. So don't worry. So as Fandiar, uh, you have again the floor for the first uh, uh, the economic uh, uh, dimension.
I see uh, an error as from there. Just give me one second, Stefania. I'm gonna okay. display my presentation. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so in the meantime, maybe the uh, the sir that had the question, I don't see the raise hand anymore. Maybe if you would like, in the meantime, to write the question, the question is answered. Or maybe okay, I I can give you the floor since Asfandiar is no okay. He solved the problems. <laughs> So, um, good. So, in the previous presentation, we learned about the conceptual and methodological basis of SG241, that is its scope, coverage, themes, sub-indicators, periodicity, and reporting. In this session, we will go through the 11 themes and 11 respective sub-indicator of SG241, particularly focusing on the rationale for selection of the theme and the sub-indicators, the data items required to construct the sub-indicators and the sustainability criteria um, developed to assign the farms and its agriculture area, um, red, green, and yellow statuses. So, as highlighted earlier, uh, SG241 is defined using simple formula, which is uh, area under productive and sustainable agriculture, Divide by, divided by agricultural land area. Um, again, let us focus on agricultural land area. This was a question which was repeatedly getting asked, uh, you know, um, uh, in the previous session. Um, so this uh, agricultural land area definition is based on FAO land use classes. And as such, countries, uh, provide national level statistics annually via the relevant FAO state questionnaire uh, on, 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 on agricultural land area to, to FAO, um, apart from, apart from the, these other classes. Very importantly, the same land use classes are collected by census, which automatically addresses the issue of common land. In other words, the agriculture census does not focus uh, does focus on, on farms only, pardon me, uh, just like SEG 241 and exclude common land along the lines of SEG 241. So we focus on agriculture land area, uh, well-established concept, which is derived by adding um, crop land as well as land under uh, permanent meadows and, uh, and uh, pastures. Or define it differently, uh, you know, uh, uh, and you know, an aggregation of all these different land use classes, land under temporary crops, land under temporary meadows and pastures, land under temporary fallow, land under permanent crops and land under permanent meadows and pastures combined together will give us agriculture land area. Now from permanent meadows and pastures, as I was mentioning earlier, if you know the agriculture holding is uh, basically using uh, uh, pastures which are commonly used by several agri or, or agriculture holding combinedly, then you know we will we will of course exclude that part from the agriculture land area of that particular holding. So that point needs to be uh, you know kept in mind. Now, in terms of uh, um, let let me just go back here once again. So. Another important point to keep in mind is that for estimation of agriculture land area, uh, we adhere to the system of environmental economic accounting, agriculture, forestry, and fisheries, and World Census of Agriculture uh, 2020 standard and classification systems. Um, we believe that many countries across the globe are using the CIAFF as well as WCA 2020. And if you are compiling your, uh, you know, um, uh, um, uh, uh, statistics using those definitions, then, uh, you know, uh, arriving at agriculture land area shouldn't be a problem. Another uh, important consideration, consideration uh, is the land tenure of the agriculture holding. Uh, land tenure, tenure, in fact, of the agricultural land that the agriculture holding is operating. Uh, particularly from 241 perspective, 
the scope include the entire agricultural land area which includes uh, area owned and operated area rented in from other agriculture holdings or land borrowed for free or occupied um or it could also include common land managed by the agriculture holding exclusively that's a very important point if the common land is managed exclusively by the holding then that that will be part of the scope uh, in terms of land tenure um now the land which is owned by the holding but but it but it is rented out it is out of the scope of sdg 241 so here is an example of uh, of four parcels um, um of land uh, managed by a given agriculture holding so parcel 1 you know this dotted line the green dotted line as you can see here um uh, it is owned a uh, plot 1 is owned and used by the holding um uh, plot 2 is follow so this particular agriculture uh, the, this parcel 1 will be part of the scope of the um agriculture uh, holding uh, area parcel 2 is again owned and used by the agriculture holding so this will be considered as part of the scope of sg241 parcel 4 is is not owned by the holding but in fact it's rented in from another holding but it will be considered as part of the agricultural land area of that particular holding while parcel parcel 3 it's owned but it's rented out so it's excluded from the from the scope of sg241 for that particular agriculture holding so this is this is just from the land tenure perspective to clarify as to what is included and what is excluded what's excluded is uh, agricultural land rented out so this slide illustrate once again the framework of sg241 the three dimension and 11 sub indicator its applicability and reference period for data collection so as you can see here it, three dimension economic environmental and social 11 themes 11 sub indicators uh, applicability of, of the sub indicators to different agriculture production systems as well as the reference period um, or the recall period um, as i mentioned earlier the last calendar year could be you know it is up to the country for them to decide as what their agriculture year is okay so it's not mandatory for 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 them to adhere to the last 12 months for them to be able to um, you know provide the information on sg241 so it could be any um, any uh, reference period that is currently in use at the country level again from uh, applicability perspective we will come back to this as part of the uh, each sub indicator respectively so before going into the details of respective uh, sub indicators let me provide you with the generic steps um, that will be used to estimate each sub indicator um, so once relevant qualitative information are collected through agriculture surveys and thereafter checked cleaned validated and stored on computer as excel spreadsheets it must be then transformed into appropriate quantitative primary variables that are in turn used to construct the 11 sub indicators of uh, of sg241 so a set of uh, scripts um and procedures typically carried out with uh, statistical software such as stata or r um are are applied to the survey data for constructing the primary variables that will in turn um um are combined to construct each sub indicator so this will be this will be clarified in turn but however if you are interested in getting to know more about the generic steps involved in construction of each of the sub indicator at a high level we have provided you know um um this uh, pdf document as well that you may want to have a look at so let's go to the first sub indicator in the economic dimension um 
The dimension is economic. Uh, the theme is land productivity. The coverage is all form types. The reference period is last calendar year. Um, the sub indicator is farm output value per hectare. Now, land productivity is a measure of agriculture value of outputs obtained on a given area of land in a given period in a, in a given period of time. Um, at a farm level or agricultural holding level, land productivity reflects technology and production processes for a given agroecological condition. In a broader sense, an increase in the level of land productivity enables higher production per unit of land. Um, now, land productivity is driven by combination of multiple factors, which include climate, soil, topography, land use, and management. Um, in addition to this, land productivity varies not only in space, but also in time. This variability in land productivity occurs at different time scales from seasonal to interannual in response to variability in, um, in rainfall. Um, in the context of SG241, we will use the classical approach to estimate land productivity. That is uh, first the farm output value in local currency units is estimated, uh, which is then divided by the agricultural land area uh, of that particular agricultural holding and measured in hectares um, to, to derive land productivity. And once this land productivity for an individual farm is calculated, it is then compared uh, against the uh, farm output value per hectare um, of, the, of the agriculture holdings that belongs to the group of uh, producer to which that particular agriculture holding belongs to. Um, so the farm performance or the agriculture holding performance in terms of this sub indicator is compared vis-a-vis -vis its peers or its competitors um, in order to assign the red, green, and yellow statuses. It will be clarified in, in, in a turn. So for this uh, sub indicator uh, one, we are interested in the following uh, uh, data items to estimate the three primary variables. So the formula is given um, as farm output value per hectare, which is agriculture holding output value in local currency units, divided by agriculture land area in hectares of that particular agriculture holding. Um, so what, uh, what we need uh, for the numerator is, uh, of course, value of output, which is nothing but the physical quantities into the farm gate prices of five main crops um, and its byproduct produced by the holding in a reference period. If it is a primary crop producing agriculture um, farm, five main livestock and its product produced by the holding in a reference period, if it is a, a primarily livestock producing uh, agriculture holding um, or a mix of crops and livestock if it, if it is producing um, you know both crops and livestock and other on-farm product produced by the holding and reference period by these other on-farm products what we mean to say is apart from the primary activities which could either be crops or livestock or a mix of these two other secondary activities performed by the agriculture holding okay so here it would include, you know, aquaculture if it is performed by agriculture apart from crops and livestock, or or, or other activities performed by the agriculture holding. This, so once the agriculture, so so once the farm output value um, is 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 determined is uh, is uh, estimated, what we need then is agriculture land area in hectares. So, so we would need the agricultural land area of that particular agriculture holding collected using the same definition which I uh, described on the previous slide using CIAFF and WCA 2020. So once this is done, then we will categorize, uh, you know, the agriculture holdings by the different typologies which I mentioned earlier in my in the previous presentation: household, non-household crops, livestock, and mixed, and irrigated and non-irrigated, 
And then what we will do is as a last step, we will start comparing the, the, the particular uh, farm productivity with the, uh, the uh, productivity of the entire distribution of farm selected as part of the center. But the, the, these steps will be uh, clarified in the, in the next slides. So this is just an example of the crops uh, and, the by, and its byproduct uh, list. Um, so these are, uh, you know, some of some of the crops. Of course, uh, you know, these crops will vary from uh, from one region of the globe to another region of the globe, as well as from one country to another, and within the country from uh, from one region to another, and within within region from one agriculture holding to another, right? And these are some of the typical byproducts that are produced by the agriculture holding. So for wheat, I mean, uh, once the wheat is harvested. You know, as a byproduct, the farmer also produced stocks for rice, you know, straw and husk and so on. Some of the other on-farm activities, apart from the primary activities of crops and livestock, it could be many things. It could be um, uh, further processing of uh, agriculture products uh, carried out on the agriculture holding. Um, it could very well be, you know, uh, production of forestry products as well as um, uh, production, processing and preserving of fish, crustacean and, uh, and other, uh, um, and other um, uh, um, uh, agriculture produce. But if these on-farm activities are not practiced uh, or, um, uh, or not uh, um, performed by the agriculture holding, then of course, simply these will be ignored, okay? So, the as i mentioned earlier i mean uh, in order for us for for countries to have precise estimates of the land productivity it's always recommended okay it's always recommended um resources permitting that countries categorize um, their agriculture holdings by different types so the productivity uh, and the rationale was that the productivity of, uh, of a given type of agricultural holding is different from another type of agricultural holding. So a household, primarily crop producer, which is irrigated, may have a different productivity than, um, um, uh, than a non-household, uh, you know, livestock uh, producer, okay? So in order to uh, basically, uh, compare apples with apples and uh, not to, not to uh, mix up things. Uh, we thought that it would be better to categorize farm by its typologies before we compare the productivities of different types of, uh, of, uh, agriculture, uh, of agriculture holdings. So, so once we once we categorize the agriculture holdings by different types, depending on as to whether this is a household farm or non-household farm, whether it's, it's uh, specialized in crops, mixed or livestock uh, production, et cetera, and the fact as to whether it's irrigated and, or not, once we categorize the farms, then we estimate you know, the same farm output value per hectare, which I explained on my previous slide. So we estimate the farm output value, and we divide by the agricultural land area for us to estimate the uh, productivity at a, at a given agriculture holding uh, level in local currency units. So just to exemplify, um, this is uh, an example of, uh, of a given agriculture holding. Uh, the formula is simple. It's the physical quantities uh, multiplied by, by the prices. So let's say, for example, uh, this is uh, um, holding identification, you know, uh, basically this is a number. So this is holding one. This holding is, is uh, focused only on, uh, on rice production. Um, these are the physical quantities. These are the farm gate prices that the farmer can, um, can have if, it, if he's, he sells this commodity, um, you know, um, uh, at the market. And these are, you know, the simple multiplication of the physical quantities with the farm gate prices. 
um, to in order to arrive at the farm output value and local currency units. Of course, uh, we will have to carry out these calculation at a single commodity level, and then we add it up to estimate the total farm output value for that particular year. Now, how do we, how do we, you know, basically um, um, arrive at these uh, numbers? Um, uh, these, th this data is uh, is basically collected through a set of questions. Okay, and these set of questions uh, have to be integrated into the agriculture survey uh, for the country to collect information on 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 the quantities and the prices for them to be able to estimate the farm output value. Now, the um, most important uh, consideration is once the farm output value uh, per hectare or the farm productivity has been calculated for all agriculture holdings, obviously categorized by different types, each category of farm uh, are ordered from the lowest to highest uh, productivity um, uh, with the uh, farm output value per hectare corresponding to the 90th percentile uh, identified according to uh, the following formula. So, you know, this is uh, the formula for identifying the 90th percentile within the distribution of agriculture holdings by different categories. So, 0.9 into a total number of observations by category of farms. So, just to exemplify, uh, here we have uh, 20 farms. The 90th percentile um, is um, is estimated to be the farm, which is number 18, and the productivity for this particular agriculture holding is estimated to be 600. Now, once this 600 um, uh, productivity is is uh, basically um, um, is highlighted to be a 90th percentile, what we then need to do is to derive two thresholds. The first one is two third of the 90th percentile and one third of the 90th percentile. So the two third of the 90th percentile estimated to be 400 and one third of the 90th percentile estimated to be, to be 200. Now using these, um, these two uh, thresholds, this is how we assign the um, sustainability status. The green, yellow, and red that I've been talking about uh, in, my, in my previous presentation. So for example, if the farm output value per hectare or the farm productivity is lower than um, the corresponding value associated with one third of the 90th percentile for the category of farm to which it belongs, then the farm will be classified as, as red. If the farm output value per hectare is equal to or greater than the value corresponding to the two third of the 90th percentile um, estimated for the distribution of category of farms to which this farm belongs, then the farm will be classified as green. And if the farm productivity falls between the two third and the one third of the 90th percentile of the categories of farm to which this farm belongs, then this agriculture holding will be classified as, as yellow. Um, for the time being, it may, may, may seem complex, but you know, with, with, uh, with, you know, with the next slide, it will become more clear. So, so, so as I mentioned to you earlier, based on the three typologies, um, you know, we can have 12 different combinations of agriculture holding. It could be crop household irrigated, it could be a livestock household irrigated, it could be mixed household irrigated, and so on. The 90th percentile for each distribution is, is then estimated. The two third of the 90th percentile and one third of the 90th percentile is then estimated by, by simply multiplying two third with the 600 and one third with the with the 600, in this case, 400, 200. Now, the, the, the last and the final step, which I was explaining earlier, is for us to benchmark or compare the productivity of individual farm with the, um, with the productivity um, of the 90th percentile derived from the distribution of agriculture holding to which 
to which this particular agricultural holdings belong to, which is estimated to be 600, the two third is 400 and 200. As you can see, the productivity of this particular agricultural holding is greater than the two third of the 90th percentile, which, which I showed you on the previous slide. So if the farm output value is equal to or greater than the value corresponding to the two third of the 90th percentile, then the farm will be classified as green or, or desirable. Now, let's take another example, holding two. The land productivity of this particular agricultural holding is estimated to be 300. The 90th percentile value for this category is estimated to be 800. Um, so once we compare the, you know, the 300 with the two third of the 800, one third of the 800, as you can see, 300 falls within the two third and the one third, and hence this holding and the land area that it owns, manages and operates will be classified as acceptable. And the last one, the land productivity of this particular holding is estimated to be 200, which is less than the lower uh, bound, that is the one third of the 90th percentile, and hence this farm is not performing well vis-a-vis its, uh, its peers or with a way, uh, you know, other agriculture holding will belong to the same category and hence this agriculture holding. And by virtue of that, the agriculture land area that it owns, manages and operates is assigned as a, as a red status. So if you, have, if you have any question about this particular sub indicator, I mean, please let me know. Good meeting. So again, we, of course, we, um... We changed a bit already the agenda because uh, we managed to to cover only the first sub indicator but i'm sure we will have uh, uh, more time tomorrow maybe we will adjust a little bit the agenda and let's see uh, so thank you very much uh, and uh, uh, i will send again the presentation as promised and see you tomorrow at the same time for sure we will start really sharp because we realize that we need more time so at 11 a.m. Italy time. Uh, of course, you will calculate uh, your timing. We will see you again here um, with the same uh, uh, logistics. So I think you need to register for the second day and then you will be logged in. So thank you very much. And as Fandia said, you can write us in the SDG 241 account for any question you might have before tomorrow.